talking about Easter programs and all that. And uh, he was four years old, the first program we had here. LJ, Brother John, my son, my baby boy, was only four. The first program, the Christmas program that we had here. And now here he is preaching um, for the glory of God. And I just give God all the praise and all the glory. I, this evening when uh, I came in, uh, Sue came back there and uh, uh, she said something. And it, it, it's me too. And then she got up here and said something very, very similar about I'm glad I don't listen to myself when it comes to staying home and things like that. We were talking about little Brentley was in church this morning, and little Brentley is a cancer survivor. And I was so, so happy uh, to see him this morning. He and his little brother came back to my classroom, and Sister Sue said, and I'm kind of paraphrasing, and yeah, we, we, rhyme, we, we, rhyme, we, we, a ba dee, a ba dee. <laughs> we, we do, though, we, we whine around about the little things in life that really don't you know, amount to anything. When you think about a child uh, going through cancer and all the chemo, I mean, I've seen what chemo does to adults. You know, I've had two sisters and a sister-in-law and a niece and a great niece and, you know, all of them have passed from cancer. And I tell you, it's, I think sometimes the treatments are harder on you than the disease itself. So to see this child come in here this morning uh, that God healed. He's he's in remission, full remission from cancer. It just really puts things in perspective. Amen. It really, really does. But I did this afternoon. I um, I went home and I haven't felt real well. I've had a headache over this eye. I guess it's an eye ache headache. And um, I got to thinking about things that I've been thinking about for months and months and months and months. And I, I literally said this. I got on the couch. My husband had already eaten. He was already in bed taking a nap. And I sat down on the couch, and I just almost teared up. And I'm not a big cry person. You know, I'm just not. And I just almost teared up, and I said, I did this. I said, I know, Lord, I know. You know, like, I know, I know. And then the scripture hit me that um, I've been back in Genesis, studying in Genesis again, and uh, I had mentioned this scripture to my son a few weeks ago, and it just hit me like a ton of bricks. That sometimes we truly get in the place to where we feel like, now I know none of you have ever felt this way, but I have. We truly have, get in a place sometimes to where we wonder if God has forgotten about us. Amen. Now knowing we know we're born again, we're born again believers, we really know God does not forget about his children. But sometimes things lay so heavy on your heart, you begin to wonder, you know, God, where or are you? Even Elijah, didn't he cry out at the River Jordan? He said, where is the God of Elijah? So sometimes I believe as humans, I believe sometimes we get to wondering, God, where are you? Where are you in this situation? Well, I'm going to tell you something. I was in a situation for over 15 years. And there were moments that I thought God had forgotten about me, but he was with me every step of the way. He never once forgot about me. But there was times this human side of me, this flesh began to wonder, God, where are you? Even though I read it in his word, I knew he was with me. Do you know this is alive and it's powerful? And we open it up and God speaks to us right here out of his precious holy word. So God does not forget his children. I want you to open to Genesis chapter 8. I love, love, love this. God's word is just good. And I tell him in prayer, I'll say, Lord, I know I don't read enough of your word, but I love your word. Amen. I think we could read it 24-7 and you just don't read it enough. Genesis chapter 8. I won't keep you long. The first verse, and that's all we're going to read. Genesis 8, verse 1. And God remembered Noah and every little living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind pass over the earth, and the waters assuaged. And God remembered Noah. Please help me pray. Father God, Lord, we thank you for your word. Your precious holy word tonight, the anointed word of God. I pray tonight, Lord, that nothing comes out of this mouth, Lord, unless it's of you, God. Touch this mouth as you did Jeremiah, God. Touch this mouth, Lord. Fill it with words to speak. We thank you tonight, God. We are nothing without you. Nothing. 
yourself and your all, but only depending on you. In the holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we love you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assaged. And you know, when you think about Noah, and I love this. We actually talked about it just a little bit this morning. I love the story of Noah. There are very few children that haven't heard the story of Noah. However, there are some who have never heard it, believe it or not. But there are very, very few of them. And they always think of the big boat. They always think of the water. And they always think of the animals two by twos, which we always talk about. Some came by sevens. And we talk about things like that. But do you know when you really look at the reality of Noah being human, following God, listening to God, being cooped up. Yes, the ark was huge, but can you imagine the smell? I'm just being real with you. Can you imagine the smell? Can you imagine that there were times that Noah probably went to that one window without opening it, and he probably thought that maybe God had forgotten about him? I don't really know how long they had been in that ark. I know that uh, I've read it before, but I can't really tell you off the top of my head. But no doubt in my mind, Noah probably became a little lonely sometimes, even though his wife was there with him, even though his sons and their daughters were on the ark with him, and even though all of these animals that he had to take care of, no doubt in my mind, he became lonely sometimes. And no doubt in my mind, he probably thought that God had forgotten about him. Well, Lord, where are you? We've been on this big boat forever. I've done every, every single thing that you've told me to do. And we're still on the ark. And I tell you, there are some things that I've been going through the last few months. And sometimes I feel like, Lord, I'm still on the ark. I'm still worrying about it. I'm still thinking about it all the time. It's easy for people to tell you, stop worrying about it. Stop thinking about it. But we're human. And sometimes I feel like I'm still on that ark waiting for God. But God remembered Noah. And God remembers Karen. Amen. I love the story. Who was it? Was it Rachel that was barren? And the Bible says that God remembered her. And what happened because of that? She gave birth to a son, one of the patriarchs of the Bible. God remembers his people. He never forgets his people. But sometimes the flesh, we kind of get on that we whiny. We really do. And just because things are not happening the way we think they should happen and when we think they should happen, sometimes we tend to wonder if God has forgotten about us. And we kind of feel like we're still stuck in this art. Do you ever feel like you're stuck? I'm telling you, sometimes, and it feels like sometimes it doesn't matter how much you've prayed about it. It doesn't matter how many times you've opened that word and you've read it. It doesn't matter how many times you've listened to the word of God and you've prayed and you've sought the Lord about it. It still seems like things are not being done. It's almost like you're stagnant. And we know that eventually stagnant water does what? It begins to smell. But I'm telling you right now, God hears your prayers. He heard us the very first time we called upon him. We know that by the story of Daniel. He told him, he said, I heard you the very first time you prayed. God hears us the very first time we utter the words. God knows the need of his people. And God loves you. He loves me. Hallelujah. He wants things done for us. He wants to do things for us. But I'm going to tell you, and I, I, I know from experience, and I, I know some of you think, well, sharing the word is a good thing, and it is. But I'm going to tell you something, doing a good thing at the wrong time is the wrong thing. Did you hear that? Doing a good thing at the wrong time is a wrong thing. And I've done that before, thinking Karen knew best. But one remarkable thing about the story of Noah is that Noah waited. He waited on God. He waited on God all those years building the ark. He waited on God. Then here comes the rain, the water from up. You know, they'd never seen a drop of rain from the sky. He waited on God. 
And even after the twig was brought to him, he waited on God to open that door. Listen, if a door is open, walk through it. But if a door doesn't look like it's open, don't try to push it. You need to wait on God. And sometimes when we get to the point to where we don't want to wait on God, that's when we think God has forgotten about us. Because we want things done our way right now. We want it done exactly like Jen wants it done and not like God wants it done. And that's when we mess up. He hasn't forgotten about us, Brother Edward. God remembers his people. I love it when Moses, he heard the, the cries of his children. And I love what my son, Brother LJ, our little associate pastor, I love what he said that one Sunday. I'll never forget this because I'm just being honest with you. I always thought they were enslaved for 400 years, but you know they were not. <laughs> They were not enslaved for 400 years. And I heard him say that that morning. I thought, oh my goodness. They were there for 400 years. But they were not enslaved. But when they became held captive, God heard them. God had not forgotten about his children. And when he came to Noah and as that unconsuming fire, he's the same God today. Yes. He is the same. He's that unconsuming fire today. When he came to Moses, he heard, he remembered his people. He did not forget about the children of Israel being over there in captivity. And look what happened, but it was on God's time. I don't understand God's time. People will try to, to, to explain everything to you, and they can't explain everything to you. I've heard Brother Swagger, and I think the older he gets, the more wise he is. Don't ever say anything about that man to me. But I've heard him say more than once that nobody understands all of God's word. Nobody does. But sometimes we want to explain everything, and we can't do that. But God never forgot the children of Israel. God remembered Noah. I don't know why that had to happen. I don't know why the flood. I know their sin was horrible. And I know today it's stench in the nostrils of God. I know it's stench the things that are going on in this world today. I mean truly, if he ever wanted to spew anyone out, it is today. I have you not be cold or hot, lukewarm. Or he'd rather you be cold or hot, but not lukewarm. If we ever live in that time, it is today. He says, I'll spew you out. I know it literally makes him nauseous to think of the things that are going on in this world. And I don't know why the flood happened. I know the sin caused it to happen. But I can't tell you why God decided to destroy it with water. There are things we just cannot explain. But one thing I do know for certain. This thing I've been going through for a few months, God has never forgotten me. And today I did, boy, brother, I was on the pity wagon. I sat in there and I did, I plopped on that couch. I said, I know, I know, Lord. And I said it just like that. And I even began to weep a little bit. I said, I know, Lord, I know, I know. And he does not ever forget about me. Never, ever, ever does he forget about me. He just knows the perfect timing for everything. For everything. His ways are not our ways. And I'm paraphrasing. And that's so very true. His ways are not our ways, guys. His thoughts are so far above our thoughts. We truly can't comprehend who God is. But he loves us so much that he'll never, ever forget about us. He will keep us through it. Amen. I just love him. I just love him. When you pray, I desire your prayers. That's really all I feel like I have this evening. I feel like if I kept going, it'd be out of the flesh. But I want to encourage you with these words that God is no respecter of person. And just as he remembered Noah, he remembers you too. Just as he remembered the children of Israel and Abraham, you know, Lot escaped and because it says God remembered Abraham. 
That was the reason Lot escaped. It had nothing to do with Lot. But it was God's covenant with Abraham. And the word says he remembered Abraham. And he remembers you too. So whatever it is you've been facing, whatever battle it is, that I mean, you're trying to fight it on your own, stop it. Because you cannot do it on your own. You have to turn it over to God. And guys, I'll be honest, that's something I struggle with sometimes. Because I want it now, now, me, me, now, 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 now. But we have to stop being that way. God's got your back. I'm going to tell you something. He has your back like nobody else will have. He loves you like nobody else can possibly love you. He remembered us when he sent his son yes, to that old rugged cross yes, on Golgotha Hill. Uh, I love him tonight. Love Please you. pray for me because I so desire your prayers. Does anybody need prayer uh, this evening for anything? Always pray for me because I am in dire need of it. Is everybody okay? Always pray for me. I need if you're okay, say amen or amen. Oh me. Praise God, Brother John.